Hi, I'm Patrick, and this is Kuva. We are at RE Plus. He's with Power Electronics. We're gonna talk about this super nice piece of equipment for DC fast charging, so let's go. One of the reasons I wanted to stop by here is because this unit looked pretty familiar to me, but not quite. This isn't all black, but I've seen some press photos of basically this unit in all white because Ford is going to be using these for a lot of their uh, dealerships to provide DC fast charging for the dealers that elect to do that. Some of those rules have changed for their, their dealers. But now that we're here, we have opportunity to learn more about what we may be seeing soon. And it's not just for Ford. It's going to be a lot of, a lot of people are going to be using these, right? Right, right. Yeah, so this is a brand new product for us. This is a 400 kilowatt all-in-one system. Uh, this will be available to uh, end of this year to the middle of next year, depending on cooled or non-cooled cables. Um, they come in 40 kilowatt increments, our power modules, and that's scalable down to 240. So very, you know, approachable unit. We can do uh, NAX uh, cabling. Uh, we can offer that straight out of the factory. We can also do retrofits and we can offer CCS or any combination thereof. So pretty versatile. And you can do simultaneous charging with both handles? Yes, that's so right. That's awesome. Yep, one car on each side, 200 kilowatts per car. Um, so this will be actually be our answer to Nevi. So we will be manufacturing right. this unit in the US towards the end of 2025 for uh, Nevi, Nevi compliance. That's very cool. Yeah. Now you said it's it's scalable. So like if somebody goes with like a 240 kilowatt mm -hmm. uh, and they decide they want to add more modules later, that's yep, that's absolutely. All. You can start smaller, and as your needs grow, you can add the power modules in there. You can depopulate or repopulate the unit. Yeah. Yep. Now you mentioned uh, cooled, uh, air cooled versus liquid cooled. Mm -hmm. Now, what situations are are more appropriate for which? I, I mean, mm -hmm. me as a consumer, I don't get to pick but the charge point operators are the ones that get to pick. Why would they pick air-cooled versus liquid-cooled? Yeah, um, so you're gonna get faster power, more power at the at a 500 amp level with the 500 amp cooled, um, cooled cables. Thicker and heavier Yeah, though. thicker, heavier. It's got coolant inside that actually cools it because there's more heat going through these. Right. So we offer these with cooled uh, cables and we can also do non-cooled cables, 200 amp and 300 amp cables. So, yeah. So like on a 240 kilowatt station, they may exactly. be more of an option, but if you're going up 400 kilowatts, yeah, they'd more on the cooled side. Yeah. So we offer this version in a 120 and a 240 as well. So this is a new unit, not out yet. We do currently have the 120 and the 240 in the field in this standalone family. That's very cool. Yeah. And to deal with some of the, the heaviness of it, I see we have some cable management here, but you also have yep. the option to put like a swing arm as well. Exactly. We have this cable management in here as standard. We're going to have the option of a swing arm on this unit once it's developed, as I said, end of this year, middle of next year. That's very cool. Yeah. So do you find that there's uh, a lot of people, a lot of charge point operators that are looking at buying something that is expandable or do they just sort of lock in and we're gonna go 400 kilowatts and... Yeah, we're seeing more lock in, um, especially uh, we will see it with this because, you know, Nevi has a certain requirement and the, the current um, power modules, the current power level of this unit is compliant with that. So yeah, we usually see um, with standalone units, they buy the full power. We also offer distributed systems, so power tower separate from a dispenser. Oh, nice. And those are also scalable, good for fleet applications. You know, we, our biggest tower is 1.4 megawatts. Right. And we can attach that to up to 48 different dispensers. So great wow. for a, a, yeah, a fleet application. So they can sort of distribute across yeah, the board. Yeah, they can distribute power evenly across the, the dispensers. Yep. And those are very scalable as well. And I would imagine that it also allows them to say, like, if, if this truck needs more power than this truck, they can sort of... Exactly. Yep. Okay, that's yep. very cool. We have the, the card reader, which I know that's probably uh, for Nevi compliance. Uh -huh. uh, but you also have a, an interface here, and I, I would assume that, like, Mm -hmm. It isn't tied to power electronics, it's whatever charge point operator, they can tie in their exactly. software yep. right there. Yep, so we offer the, the, the payment terminals on all of our chargers. Right. Um, and then the, as far as the CMS, the back end on these units, we have our own CMS, which we can choose, or we're integrated with up to 25, 30 different back end providers. Nice. So if a customer already has a certain back end that they want to use, we're happy to integrate that into the chargers. Very cool. Now as a EV driver, over the course of our times, you mm -hmm. know, using D various DC fast chargers, reliability has been, you know, in Huge. the forefront of our mind, and I'm sure it's yours. Yep. Um, 
I, I've seen that like generation upon generation, they're getting better and better, more reliable. And I'm assuming you guys have been working on making them more reliable, but also easier to maintain. Yeah. So we are definitely making them more reliable, but, and we understand that service is a huge part of this whole process. Yeah. You know, so we have developed an internal service team that we are happy to come out, service these charges for you, but we also uh, put together like a, a university for our customers where they can train their own people to service these. So we have various levels, A, B, and C, um, that you can train your, your people on and they can actually service the chargers themselves. And in the future, we're gonna be able to tap third party, um, uh, third party organizations to be able to service these as well. So lots of different way, um, ways to service these units in the future. Very cool. Yeah. Now, I, and again, as an EV owner, like I've sort of been in the nerdy side of things, so I've mm -hmm. gotten to know various brands. Power Electronics is one that's a little bit new to me, but you guys, have a history of building chargers as well as a lot of other things. Do you want to tell a little bit about the background of Power Electronics? Uh, yeah, so really the main business for Power Electronics is solar and battery inverters. Um, so that's, you know, a great portion of the business. And this is a smaller portion of the business, but it's growing incredibly, uh, incredibly fast, sure. as you can imagine. But you've, uh, Power Electronics has been in Europe as so far, and now they're having more of a presence here in the U.S., yeah. especially with the manufacturing coming here to the U.S. Yeah. For the, the the yeah. yeah, yeah. So all the main main manufacturing is in Spain. Same facility where we manufacture all the inverters. So there's a lot of you know, uh, the technical uh, engineers that we use uh, uh, sort of, you know work on both units in in Spain. Um, so everything is manufactured there. This unit we're going to be manufacturing in the U.S. Just this 400 kilowatt in the future to be NEVI compliant. That's really cool. Yeah. Well, I'm excited to see these at the ground. We're always like looking for more reliable charging. Yep. It's always neat to see ones that seem like they're well designed, yep. cable management. So it's like checks all the boxes for me as a consumer. So I'm really excited to see these, um, whether I see it in this all black Darth Vader look yeah. or the Ford white and blue. So, yep. Yep. Right. Yeah, we, we can white label this as, as the customer needs. So you can see it at all the, at all the Ford dealerships. Um, white labeled with Ford Pro. So yeah, you'll be seeing a lot more of these out in the field uh, very yeah. soon. Very cool. Yeah. All right. Thank you for your time. Of course. Thank you. Well, that was cool to learn about. I just came over to this side because I wanted to check it out. Here's the NAX connector on basically what almost looks like a regular handle. But I, I think this part of it is really cool is that uh, as we get more cars with NACS or J3400, whatever you want to call it, we're going to see other manufacturers, other chargers besides Tesla have this type of connector on it. So uh, really cool to see that they have CCS on one side, NACS on the other other side. Let me plug this one back in. Uh, but very cool to learn about this. I'm really excited. If I find out that there's a Ford dealership with one of these, I'll go and, and Liv and I will go and, and, and take a look at it. Uh, make sure it's good, reliable, all of those things that we're always looking for in uh, EV charging. And hopefully we'll see some uh, 400 kilowatt stations that we could check out, even though our car can't take that much. We'll find a way to test it out. Anyways, thank you for watching. Thank you to our Patreon members. Their names are gonna be scrolling down here below. They're the ones that help us get to conferences like this. Uh, thank you to our YouTube members that have also uh, decided to contribute monthly. There'll be little uh, lightning bolts by their name. And as Liv would say, just remember, whatever you drive, however you charge it, enjoy the ride. Bye.